Robert Plank Show, episode 241. Stop overpaying your taxes and avoid entrepreneurial mistakes that cost you thousands with Diane Gardner. Hey everyone and welcome back to the program. Our guest today is Diane Gardner and she's a certified tax coach, a Quilly Award recipient, and a best-selling author whose proactive planning approach gives clients a leg up on Uncle Sam and helps them dodge the tax bullet. So Diane, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks for having me, Robert. I'm excited to share some exciting tax information with your guests. Exciting tax stuff, if, if, you, can, <laughs> if you can look at it that way. And, and yeah, like as far as the, the taxes went, like uh, I don't maybe maybe it's the same for you or your clients, but sort of like, I, I sort of like, I don't know, like I go back and forth with it because back, you know, when I was younger, I was like, oh, I don't need to worry too much about taxes because like I'm not making like enough money. And then when I had a couple of really good years, I was like, whoa, like now I have this huge tax bill. And then I, and then sometimes I sort of uh, go back to the middle where I'm like, okay, like this year I have to really like focus on, you know, my keep keep better records of like things I want to write off. But then sometimes I feel like I'm almost spending too much time focusing on it. And then I feel like if I hand it all off to someone, like they won't really get it. So do you sort of, I mean, do you, do you come across people who sort of deal with this kind of situation where like it's like a love hate relationship almost with me? I think you're my average client. Okay, they all perfect. say they so I'm, hate I'm not it. alone. Not alone. Nope. Nope. You are surrounded in a very popular club. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, what, what's the answer? And, and what do the, uh, you know, all these entrepreneurs, all these solopreneurs, what do we need to know about taxes and how do we make taxes fun again? Well, first of all, from my perspective, I get to be a tax superhero. And that's what makes taxes fun is that I get to work with small businesses, entrepreneurs who are making some money. They're in that painful stage where we, now we've got money, we got to pay tax. And I get to set up strategies for them that come right out of the IRS code. They're IRS approved, court tested strategies that save them money year after year after year after year. And they get to reap those savings and they get to put that money back in their wallet. And so that's where I get to be the fun part of taxes in that area. And just to brag, just for just a tiny moment here, we saved our clients you know, over the last few years of $1.1 million in tax now. Crazy. Yes, that's money they would have given to the IRS that they didn't need to. So, I mean, all those tax savings, like, are there, is there like a sort of a, a list you go down or are there sort of like common things everyone should or, or, or should be looking into or is it a matter of for everyone it's different? Well, for everyone, it's slightly different. But in my book, The 10 Most Expensive Tax Mistakes That Cost You Thousands, we have a chapter dedicated to each one of these, kind of just the common strategies, things like making sure, making sure that you're in the right entity type. Because if you've outgrown your entity type, you could be wasting thousands of dollars a year in tax. Making sure that you're maximizing your meals and entertainment and your mileage. Uh, if they're working from home, are they picking up the home office deduction? How about hiring your kids to work in your business and be able to take expenses right now that are an after-tax deduction and in theory be writing them off through your business by paying your kids to work in your business? It's a great way to write off some private school or to help start saving for college. Um, we like to look at ways we can write off health insurance and all your medical costs through your business. There's some strategies for doing that that work with small businesses. So we get to work in the fun stuff. Just a lot of these little things that when you pull them all together can make a big difference on somebody's tax return. Awesome. And, and as people are following along, I want to make sure that, uh, that everyone can find that 10 Most Expensive Tax Mistakes uh, book that you mentioned. So is the place to get that one uh, taxcoachforyou.com? Yes, and that's using the number four in that address. Yes, and we just ask people to cover the shipping on it. So I believe it's four ninety nine for shipping. Um, we, we mail out books almost every single day of the week because we just love giving that information away. Um, I just, I firmly believe in being a giver. So if we can get that information to people's hands, they can start learning about some of these things that possibly their accountant or their tax preparer isn't really telling them about. Awesome. And, and I think that we've all, I mean, I think all of us who uh, who have a business have, have been, been to the tax person sort of 
have experienced that sort of gap where at, at least with uh, you know I've been through it a few accountants and they all seem to not really they don't really understand the whole like internet marketing thing there's no you know office space no employee or maybe only a couple employees very little inventory and so so that seems like a great resource for people sort of to to bridge that gap and like you said like figure out the, the right entity type the meals and the home office stuff and the health insurance and having your having your uh, your kids involved in all that stuff and so so okay so so there are all these um these sort of tax mistakes that uh you know that that people are having and so can you sort of walk us through maybe like uh maybe like a client you've dealt with or some kind of situation where just uh everything was sort of not where it should be and you kind of cleaned it up a little bit oh you bet yes oh, i have lots of those kind of stories awesome <laughs> uh what one of my very, very first tax plans that I did happened to be a machine shop here in our local area. And when I picked them up, it was not for tax planning reasons. It was because they were involved in a sales tax audit. So we ended up helping them work their way through that. But in the course of that sales tax audit, I was able to see their income tax returns. And by taking a look at those income tax returns, my eyes about popped out of my head because they had definitely outgrown their entity type. And they were paying thousands of dollars a year in tax that they didn't need to pay. And it was just, it was bleeding them dry with how much tax they were paid. It was, it was just amazing. And so we were able to sit down with him and give him some suggestions for a different entity type. And in his case, uh, we live in a state that's very LLC friendly and not every state is. So we had him become an LLC so we could give him some limited liability protection on the type of work that he did. Then we took it one step further and we got permission from the IRS for him to be taxed as an S corporation. So then that allowed us to put him on payroll through his own corporation. And now the he was able to save the self-employment tax that we all hate so much because now he's only paying it just on the reasonable salary that we have him taking. And the rest of that profit that flows through to him is not subject to that self-employment tax. And so that saved him probably about $20,000 a year, just that one move alone. Then on top of it, he, he was to the point in life where he was ready to start looking at some retirement. And so we helped him uh, hook up with a retirement planner who was able to get him set up with a safe harbor 401k and with that safe harbor 401k and the entity type change that we made um firming up a few of his deductions and things that he wasn't really tracking real well he's been saving an average of about 30 to thirty-three thousand dollars a year every year and he has since bought a commercial building and about another year or two years worth of tax savings, and he will have totally paid for that building with his tax savings. Crazy. I, yes, and I'm, those are stories I love. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's great listening to that because it's 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 one thing to say like, oh, here's all these things, but to just hear about how you know it just it almost sounds like certain things just had to be reconfigured or certain you know problems mm -hmm. fixed or or some solutions found to those. And and I I really like that story in particular just because like you can kind of. You can kind of get both both sides of it, right? Like there's the side where uh, where there's sort of like a checklist in place somewhere of like wrong entity type stuff like that. But then there was also the the part of you working your magic and saying like, okay, well in this certain in this certain case with this person uh, now because of you know his his age and the age of the business and stuff like that, then you could also go and look into that. Um, that sort of re retirement planning thing, and so I mean, what what is um what what's the situation when when someone comes to you for help? Like, could they uh can can they do it like all themselves? Is there the option for you to totally do that sort of service where they they you take it over even if they're not local, or is it sort of a mix of the two? Like, what's sort of a uh, what what kind of packages are are you offering with this? Well, I'll tell you my ideal situation. Um, I I do work nationwide, so we've got clients all the way from Rhode Island to Hawaii. Um, Kind of the way it normally happens is people contact me that they're interested in our free tax analysis that we offer. And that free tax analysis, we take a look at their last two years business and personal tax returns, or if it's just a Schedule C on a personal, whatever they've got. And then usually I'll send them an email with a few clarifying questions because I can't always see everything on that tax return. If they're keeping their books through QuickBooks, then I'll also ask for a QuickBooks backup. 
and get in and just do some digging, do some looking around, do some analysis, try to see, is there some mistakes and missed opportunities that I can potentially even fix for them? I've been amending returns left and right recently and getting tons of money back for people. Um, then once we get to that point, if they qualify for tax planning services, then we'll move more into that arena. But I always get on the phone or Skype with them and let them know what I found on those tax returns uh, just from taking that quick little look at the return and or their QuickBooks backup and giving them some pointers on things that maybe they can do themselves if they really don't qualify for true tax planning. But if they're at the point where they qualify for true tax planning, then we're going to want to set up the ability to put together a customized plan for them that meets with their goals and their vision where they're headed with their business. And I have a, a whole questionnaire that they answer so that I, I get a better understanding on where they're headed over the next three to five, ten years or whatever. Because I don't want to suggest a, a retirement plan package to somebody who's 25 and that's the furthest thing on their mind. But, you know, somebody who's in their 50s or mid 50s and they've been in business for you know years and they've never even given that much thought, they're going to say, yeah, I think it's time we better start putting something away. And so they're a great candidate for that and somebody else might not be. So we try to make all of our planning customized to match everybody's personal goals. Awesome. And I like that. It's, it's almost like you, you meet and you sort of feel them out and, and figure out like how far along the process that they uh, they need to go in. And I mean, and we're still, you know, we're, we're still we're talking here and we're not we're not uh, getting wrapped up or anything just yet. But I want to make sure that as uh, yeah, we're talking and people are following along, I want to make sure that everyone knows where to go to get that uh, the free tax analysis. So can you sort of walk us through like where they uh, can go to claim that? You bet. If they go out to www.taxcoachforyou.com, uh, they can go ahead and order their copy of the book. Then they can just drop me a note that says I'm very interested in your, your tax analysis and my admin will send them a secure email link so they can go ahead and email over those tax returns and a QuickBooks backup if they're doing QuickBooks. And then we'll take some time and look at it. Now, as we're recording this, we are on the brink of flipping the switch for tax season. So my turnaround times will be a little slower than they are outside of tax season, just because we're about to be bombarded. Fair enough. I mean, good to know going in. And so taxcoachforyou.com and click on that contact link. And that way you can, uh, everyone listening can can get in touch in, with Diane. And so... Um, so you deal with all these sort of like you know wide ranges of clients, and so as far as like some of us, uh, some of us internet people, people who maybe maybe if we work at home and maybe if uh, we have you know a lot of this this income where it's not you know it's not put back in the business, and if we don't put put it back in the business, then it's uh, you know really easy to just evaporate with taxes. And so, is there anything specific that you know us uh, internet marketers and solopreneurs need to be on the lookout specifically as far as uh, this upcoming tax season? Well, I see an awful lot of people that are in your space missing lots of deductions just because they're, they're not keeping track. They're busy. They're running their business. They're following up on leads. So they don't have good accounting system behind them. And I think that is a big key in it. And a lot of people don't feel comfortable doing it themselves. And so then I, I always suggest that you should hook up with a good, solid professional of some sort to make sure that those expenses are being recorded. I'll just give you another quick little story here. I picked up a client who wanted some bookkeeping done. Every year, the last couple of years, he'd been showing about $12,000 net profit on his tax returns. So when he came to us for some bookkeeping, I'm thinking he's not even a tax planning client at all. But okay, we'll help him and get his books caught up. Well, by the time we got everything caught up, we realized that in 2016, his net profit's about $110,000. And in looking back at the stuff from prior years, he was deducting tons and tons of personal stuff through his business. His profit was really probably in the fifty to sixty thousand range, even higher in prior years. But he doesn't know what he didn't realize what was deductible and what wasn't. And so he just would give his tax preparer a sheet of paper with a bunch of numbers on it and the preparer would do the tax return because that's what he asked him to do. And so he was really hot when he found out how high his profit really was. But he's a great candidate now for tax planning that we can potentially fix that problem now that his books and records are being kept correctly. 
Awesome. And so to solve that problem, I mean, what, what sort of is the situation like? Should, should a, a client like that give you a dump of their uh, PayPal transaction and things like that? Or like how do you bet? Okay. Yeah. In his case, we got his credit card transactions downloaded. We downloaded his PayPal account. We downloaded his bank statement. And then we set to work and just reconciled everything out and showed him how much money he had actually taken out of the business. He about had a heart attack when he saw how much. Because he just, you know, he kept telling us, well, I don't take anything out of my business. And yeah, right. But anyhow, um, but just the fact that having a clean set of books, now he's completely different client to me. And he has a great potential. We could save him probably twelve to $13,000 a year in tax if he'll let us. So, uh, so along those lines, like, is there anything like specific or anything like that always po pops up as far as like, what a lot of business owners like forget to deduct because I know that at least like from what what little I know like there there's some stuff that some people say is okay to deduct and some stuff that sounds kind of scary like um like for a long time I hadn't uh, been deducting my postage or I know someone who uh, rents a, a PO box you know over near near where like he wants to go anywhere or, or goes like you know buy like his kid's school or something so that he can you know go to the PO box and then write off that mileage but then. Uh, some other stuff I've heard from like, you know, non accountants, so I don't even know what to trust, but I've heard like you can't write off like if you buy like suits to speak at an event and you can't write off like cruises. So, I mean, are, are there like some really common like do's and don'ts as far as like knowing what to write off and what not to? Right. The clothing area is a really tough area because the IRS code says it has to be a, basically a uniform. So, one of my uh, business coaching clients, he has developed a uniform. He wears a dark colored suit with a pink tie and a white shirt or a pink shirt, and that is his uniform. He says, I would never wear that anywhere else other than at a speaking engagement. And so now we can write that off because it's his uniform. So, but if it's just a suit and you can wear it elsewhere, you could wear it to go out, you could wear it to church, you could wear it wherever, it's not deductible. But if it's a uniform, and ideally we get the business name on it somehow, some way, and be able to really say this is a uniform, this is not something I wear in the everyday course of my life, then it, be, then it can become deductible. So speakers and stuff have to really work on things like that. One little thing that a lot of people don't realize is dry cleaning. When you're traveling, dry cleaning is completely 100% deductible if you have it dry cleaned while you're on the road. You come back home and it may or may not be depending on what you're having dry cleaned. Because the clothes that you carried with you when you traveled, some of those were just everyday type clothes. And that, you know, if you dumped it all at the dry cleaners, that would not be deductible. Maybe only that suit. And so it's kind of funny how the tax laws are so different if you do this versus if you're doing that. Interesting. And, and yeah, and it also sounds like there's there's definitely a reason for, uh, for people like you who kind of understand both worlds so that way you don't have uh, like a, a CPA who doesn't understand the internet stuff and you don't have an internet person who doesn't understand uh, the accounting stuff. Right, right, right. Yeah, in my in my book, Stop Overpaying Your Taxes, 11 Ways Entrepreneurs Overpay and How to Stop It Now, I devoted a whole chapter just to different types of things that are deductible because I couldn't find any one list anywhere. I, you'd find bits and pieces all over the, the place. And so we finally started taking all those bits and pieces that we could put our hands on and created a chapter of various industries. What types of things are actually deductible? Awesome. And where can people locate that book? That book is for sale on that same website, thetaxcoachforyou.com. Um, you know, we love to share that information out. There's also a chapter in that book that talks about why choosing an accountant is an awful lot like dating. Because you want to get to know that person. You want to find out, are they entrepreneurial? Do they understand your industry? Do they understand the specific things that internet marketers have compared to a brick and mortar business because if they don't understand how all that works then they're potentially missing deductions or even missing income for you makes a lot of sense and so so great and, and there we go 11 ways entrepreneurs overpay and how to stop doing it now and so uh you know as we're winding uh winding down this call i want to make sure that everyone knows uh, about you know you and your websites and all this cool stuff you have uh to offer so can you tell us about like your uh 
uh, I've seen you have like a blog and there's uh, your appearance on, your, on different podcasts and things. So can you tell us about, uh, you know, uh, how your different books work together and what they can find on your blog and things like that? You bet. Our blog is an actually, it's always a very fun um, topic. It's usually something that's trending in the news. It's written very, um, very entertainingly. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not your typical blog on, you know, how to maximize your Section 179 deduction or something along those lines. It's always something very fun that they get. And they can see examples of prior blogs on there. Um, all of my books basically work together. They're most all of them are a tax planning theme with the exception of one that where we talk about how to get, how to help your business stand apart from all your competitors. But all the rest of my books are basically centered around tax planning. We've got several niche varieties of my 10 most expensive mistakes books. We've got one out there for real estate professionals and one for contractors. And within the next couple weeks, I'm hoping we'll have our one up there for medical professionals and one for dentists. And then we'll just keep on working out to other niches as we get the request, you know, can you do a book for us too? So we really just try hard to share a lot of information. You, you know, feel free to listen to other podcast interviews because in every one of them, I'm sharing tidbits about how to save money on your taxes. Um, just a lot of great information and a lot of free stuff that they can get from that site. Awesome. And yeah, it looks, looks like it's loaded up with all, all this cool stuff. And like you said, it's, it's number one, tailored to these different industries and so that way we can solve this problem of you know there's like general accounting advice but how do we know what relates to us so that's great so it, it's related exactly to if we're entrepreneurs realtors uh stuff like that and then the other thing that like we said is that uh it, even scrolling through the blog and seeing your advice it's it's very fun and not and i mean not fun in like a too goofy kind of way but fun as if like okay well it takes this boring thing and kind of makes it interesting and and i can see in the different ways that um it can it can benefit me so lots of great stuff uh, today and everyone should go right now to tax coach for you that's t a x c o a c h number 4 y o u dot com and check out the 10 most expensive tax mistakes that cost you thousands and if you want to contact diane click on that contact tab and give her uh, you know a, a quick message and let her know your situation so you can see uh, what sort of uh, things need to be done and what you can do to save money on your taxes so that you can put it back in your business and uh, do the same as Diane's share with all of her success stories saves her clients over 1.1 million dollars last few years so might as well jump on it and see uh, where you know where this free money is that, that you're missing so any any like last little like little bit of advice to give people any like sort of just like you know one or two sentences that you wish you had 10 years ago or that you wish uh, all your future clients knew about I would say act now, don't wait, because if you don't do it right now, you get busy and all of a sudden six months, eight months, ten months, or a year has gone by and you find yourself right back in the same situation that you were in before. That is a lesson I've had to learn the hard way and I know I've missed out on a lot of stuff over the years because I'm just not jumping on it and acting quickly. Awesome. Wonderful advice. Act now, get ahead of it, break the cycle, all that good stuff. So thanks, Diane, for stopping by the show and sharing your expertise with us. Oh, and thanks so much for having me on your show today. The show notes, links, and resources related to our discussion with Diane today are all available at robertplank.com forward slash 241. So make sure to go there right now.